and it should come up and let you all know. Perfect. OK, so good morning, everyone. Um, as you hopefully know now that I'm Kath Allen, I'm the Wellbeing Support Services Manager at RSL Life Care Veteran Services. And I'm very, very fortunate to be working in collaboration with Eddie in this emotional regulation project. And this is the second of our information sessions. So very grateful today that we're going to have a meditation and mindfulness presentation by Eddie. And I just want to um, state, if I can, to start with that I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land in which we meet today. I am um, Riverina area today, so I'm from Wiradjuri, and I would also like to pay my respects to Elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this meeting today. I would also like to acknowledge the sacrifice and service by veterans, both current and former serving, and I extend this to their families as well. So thank you everyone for jumping back in. Um, it's really exciting today to have Eddie back. And I do just want to say, I don't know if anyone got a chance to practice anything from Eddie's workshop last week, but I did want to say that um, breath work, we do that every day without realising we breathe every day. We don't really focus on it. But me being centred to put my hand on my heart and my belly, Eddie, just made such a big difference to me. I don't know if anyone else experienced that, but it just grounded me and centred me more. So thank you for that technique. And I'll hand over to you now. Great, thanks Kat. I'll just share my screen um, if I can sort that first up, I think. Here we go. It's not looking too hectic. Very good. Um, so is that in view? Everyone can see that? Thanks Kat. Uh, so I'll just, for those who've already met me last week, thanks for joining again. And sorry to bore you, I'll just give a little bit of an intro for those who haven't met me before, and, and I'll be brief. My background is um, in physical and mental health. I initially ran gyms for 18, 19 years, uh, and then have oh, in those gyms also taught meditation. I've taught meditation, I, I'm kind of showing my age, but probably for over 20 years now. Um, and became a clinical hypnotherapist in 2008. And so at one is, and I guess the reason for me sharing the workshop, I've worked in um, stress and resilience in corporate training also for about 15 years on and off in consulting roles. But at one was developed because I went from running my own business into an environment, a corporate environment that was pretty toxic and ended up collapsing in a workplace from stress and anxiety. For me, that was the first time I'd probably had an environment that I couldn't control at all. Um, having been in gyms, I could live by the beach and mountains. And, and so from that, I needed a solution um, to, I was away from family, I was isolated. It wasn't the ideal situation. Um, and so I needed to be able to try and reduce my symptoms of stress. And the only way I found I could do that was to bring in the visual component, which was back then LED lights and flicker effect, guided visualization, um, burning oils, everything was the only way I could switch off my mind. And I had monkey mind the whole time. So very fast version of how I am here and how we've developed and why I've developed the virtual reality solution, which brings in meditation and mindfulness practices with that visual component. Luckily, that was back in 2012 that I was doing that. Technology has enabled us to have much cooler and better scenes now with the VR and you can go to mountains and forests and all of those great things. So we'll I'll go into that again briefly at the end for those who don't know about it, but obviously the VR headsets are in the, the RSL wellness centres at Wagga, at DY, and uh, I've just had them, Lauer, Lauer. Beg your pardon, took me a moment. Um, so today is to give, I guess, some of the evidence base, and that's what these workshops are about. And we're going to go through a little bit around um, the meditation. So what I will include today is some of the stuff that I would include typically in the meditation courses that I run, um, which is, you know, basically what is meditation mindfulness. Don't worry, we're not going to sit there going through definitions all day, but we'll, of course, just define what that is. Then go into a little bit of the science of why we would bother with meditation you know, what the benefits are, and then I guess what to expect in meditation and what the feedback that I typically get and also to hear from you guys on what your experience might already be um, in having meditated. So thanks for taking the time out, and um, I hope that you get value out of today. What I thought we would do first up, having said, I just said to Kath, I just um, got back to my farm last night and I have no water and I've been running around stressed as well. But prior to that, I did have the intention for doing a little bit of a meditation first to get us in the space. We ended up defaulting to that last week and I actually think it was good, a good way to just get us all focused. 
So I'm going to do that now. Um, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. If you're not, that's fine. I'm going to just put a nature scene from the VR, which is slightly distorted because of it being on normal screen. So bear with that. But it's a little bit of a snow scene because that's where I am. Well, it is very distorted. But anyway, there's. Uh, if you want to focus on that water, um, the little trickle of the flow of the water, that can be a nice focus point. Just focus into the centre of the image because the sides are where it distorts. If, you would, if you're wanting something just calming to, to look at, so just bringing your awareness now, we're just going to take a couple of minutes um, to bring into this space of meditation and mindfulness. Bringing your awareness to your breath. If you're comfortable, just closing your eyes, getting comfortable on your seat. As you inhale, just noticing the air flowing in through the nostrils and out through the mouth. And as all the thoughts of the morning and the busyness flows in and out of the mind, just take a moment to notice what's present in those thoughts, any emotions. Taking those thoughts and emotions and just placing them in a bubble next to you, in your mind's eye. A bubble or a cloud, whichever appeals. And then allowing that bubble or cloud to just float slightly to the side, just out of the mind, and placing it at the door. They're all still there, the thoughts, the emotions. And at the end of this session, we can pick them up again and continue on with the day. But just allowing those thoughts to move to the side as we become present in the now. Becoming aware of being here present, being aware of others on the call. And also just taking a moment to focus on why you're here and what you'd like to get out of today an intention for the session. Placing your hand on your heart and the belly and noticing the chest and belly rise and fall with each breath. Chest rise, belly rise, as you inhale and as you exhale, relax and let it just release and collapse down. Breathing in for four, three, four, hold for two, and breathe out for four. And again, in. Hold. And out. And one more time, just last breath in. We'll hold for four this time. And exhale out for six. And when you're ready, just bring your awareness back into the room. Opening your eyes. And getting ready for our awesome session. Thank you. Okay. Meditation and mindfulness. So I thought I'd start with... A bit of a definition, purely because people often ask me what the difference is. So I guess, you know, defining that is useful, hopefully. And predominantly, we're going to speak around meditation. And mindfulness is, I guess, a part of meditation. So meditation is a mental exercise. It trains attention and awareness of the mind. 
And with that, that gives us plenty of scope because people are often like, there's so many different types of meditation. Well, there are because we can choose to put our attention and our focus on different things. Um, and that's what I love about meditation. I think there's not one path. There's not one way. You know, to an extent, there's not. Um, I guess there is to the extent that we are learning to focus on one thing, but there's plenty of scope in, in which way we go about that. And that's what we're going to explore today. It's a tool for us to live mindfully. So what is mindfulness? It's being aware of the present moment, observing thoughts and emotions without judgment. So we practice mindfulness through meditation or with meditation and within meditation. And they, they pretty well, they're very correlated because the more we meditate, the more mindful we're able to become in every moment through our day as we strengthen that link between the conscious and, and subconscious. So we'll go into that a little more, but I just wanted to differentiate that straight up. Stress response. Uh, I'm, I know everyone on this course is going to be aware of this, so we won't talk a heap on it. I just wanted to have a reminder for all of us that this is a big why for why it's certainly why I meditate. Um, and stress response doesn't have to be mean a major stress. It may do, but it, it may just be the day-to-day -day stress you know, a, a difficult conversation. It might be that we're not eating well. It, You know, our body can't differentiate between different stresses, whether they're mental, emotional, physical. And so it all adds to the stress response. Uh, and as we know, that increases heart rate, blood pressure, um, impacts our ability to absorb nutrients. It impacts our rational thinking. We know that the rational thinking part of the brain switches off in stress response. Um, and the interesting thing is people are so stressed in their work and their jobs and often companies like the one I went, went to didn't allow any time for downregulating and taking time out. And yet I was expected to make important decisions for the company with my rational thinking mind switched off. Uh, so how's that going to work for all of us, whether it's personal or work? Um, I think that's something really underestimated, in, which is why I'm so passionate, I guess, about doing this in um, corporate environments and for us individuals so that we can demand change and give ourselves the opportunity to try and um, manage ourselves better and be given that time. In terms of the history of meditation, uh, some people think it's kind of new age, you know, and mindfulness. It's actually not at all that new age and it's not that hippie. It's been around forever. Um, it's certainly throughout history and all religions there's been an element of, of meditation um it goes back to sort of group rituals shamanic practices animistic societies and common hunter gatherer societies had the worship of natural elements such as fire and work, water so they would focus on that and and theoretically meditate on it they may not have called it meditation but it is the equivalent of um and it's been documented since the earliest written records <clears throat> back to the Hindu, Hindu Vedas. Um, and it's, you know, it's based on those principles of becoming aware of our mind and greeting the moment. So this isn't some new age thing. It's something that's been around for generations. I think it was perhaps with the Industrial Revolution, we became so focused on productivity and, and all those things that the basics of mind and the connection to earth and the connection to ourselves has somewhere along the lines, I think, been lost. But this is not something new. What is new, and the great thing is that it, the science has caught up. Um, so now it, I guess it's recognised in the scientific community, it's recognised in the academic community, rather than it being seen as a spiritual practice, um, it's actually just now seen as an essential thing for survival. So in terms of the science behind it, meditation itself, I'll just give, again, I'll give a little bit of theory. Um, Two months of meditation, meditating 20, 20 minutes a day, has been shown to shift the, the brain, basically. So it's been shown to shrink the amygdala. Two months of meditating, 20 minutes a day, um, has shown to shrink the amygdala, which is that fight or fight response. So we know the amygdala is, is the part of the brain that triggers to make us react and run from the run from the line, theoretically. Um, it's also been shown to uh expand the insula which is the part of the brain that's responsible for increasing strengthening for resilience um that part that increases for compassion so the actual structure of the brain changes through the through the meditation and through regular meditation 
not all research is 20 minutes and not all has to be 20 minutes. There's also, I guess, the research around neuroscience and the fact that repetitive, like a muscle training in the gym, as I mentioned last week, you do it again and again, and that neural pathway becomes stronger. It's the same in meditation. So whether you can do 20 minutes or two minutes, it's going to strengthen that neural pathway towards that thought process. So if we continue to have focus at that is out of that stress state, that is focused on love, compassion, even if it is, as Kath mentioned, placing our hand on our heart and connecting with our heart and and connecting with our breath. It's giving our mind a break for that two minutes, for that 10 minutes, for that 20 minutes, whichever it is, in a day. And that's what we're aiming for, is to really shift those neural pathways towards those better thoughts. And sometimes you may choose to do a meditation like gratitude, gratitude. And we know that gratitude, focusing on gratitude, reduces cortisol levels by up to 30% is what the research shows on that. So again, you can choose the focus, but whether it's gratitude or whether it's I want to focus on goal, goal setting for a session or whether it's focusing on different conversation, difficult conversation or focusing on a meeting, again, it's giving our brain a break from potentially that loop or that worry. So we know that if we're obsessing about a thought, if we're in a mental loop, two minutes of distraction away from that mental loop is enough to break it. Um, so if we're having those, you know, obsessive thoughts, just shifting the focus is enough to break that negative loop. So again, meditation may be around the fact that breath, breath work. So breathing with deep diaphragmatic breaths for a minute and a half has also been shown to reduce cortisol by 50% in the space of 90 seconds. So whether it's the breathing, whether it's the distraction of the thoughts, whether it's the shift in the brain chemistry or the brain structure in the long term, all of it is providing us benefit in terms of the brain and the brain waves. In terms of brain waves, it's also, you know, the benefit of meditation is the brain wave state has been shown to drop down into that theta state. So beta, we're running around, we're doing all our stuff. Um, and then again, just bringing bringing that down into that relaxed space. And the more often we do that, then the easier that becomes. Again, strengthening the link to be able to shift in and out. Obviously, sometimes we need to be in alpha, we need to be in beta. But being able to shift down into that theta state when we want quickly to get the benefits of the physiological benefits of the symptoms of stress is kind of what where we're at and why we might want to do it. Think I don't really have troubles with my slides. Types of meditation. There are so many different types of meditation, as I mentioned at the beginning. Some of you may have done different types, and we'll we'll go into. I'm interested to see what you've already done, and we'll chat about that in a minute. Some of them I just thought I'd mention that you may have heard. Uh, mindfulness meditation. Um, mindfulness med meditation again can be traced right back to yogic times and yogic meditation, the Vedas. Um, it was less, yoga used to be less focused on postures and it was actually a lot more around stillness and the focus on breath uh, and being aware in the in the present moment. And the Buddhist and Taoist traditions also included mindfulness. So it was a strong focus on breath and self-awareness. Transcendental, quite a lot of people um, do transcendental meditation. So this is re repetition of a sound. So this is like a mantra, 15, 15 to 20 minute twice a day of repeating a mantra and and often this is kind of gurus will hand the mantra to people um and it's a, you know it's kind of a strict approach um and many people find this structure i guess really useful for their benefit for for creating a practice um vipassana has anyone done vipassana meditation nope I can't see. So, Kathy, you can tell me if anyone responds to see no because I can't see comments or or hands. So, I'm guessing yeah, no, that's no. Not no, nothing's come up yet. But I have to. I'll admit, I have never heard of it. Okay, so Vipassana is one of the oldest Buddhist meditation practices. It's um Vipassana. Uh, you may have heard of people going off to meditate for ten days in silence. So that's often Vipassana. Goenka, um, SN Goenka had, runs a lot of the Vipassana centres. There's one in the Blue Mountains. Um, and so it's pretty well doing silent meditation for 10 days is part of the Vipassana. Um, and it's, again, it's it's focusing on awareness. You, you start with focusing on breath again, and then it's very much focused on body sensations. And 
you know, if you're a fan of meditation, and even if not, it's um, it's a very powerful experience in terms of that that structure of being, I guess, supported for ten days, um, and then and just focusing on body sensation. It's amazing. By the end of, I'll just share a little bit when I when I did Vipassana, I walked in. I've got a lot of injuries. I'm sure a lot of uh, other people in the call might as well, people because it's if you've been quite physical in your life. Um, and when I arrived at Vipassana, I sat, I couldn't sit with without pushing, supporting my back and my knees, and I was in a lot of pain. Trying to sit for ten hours a day and meditating was hell, and that was actually my biggest challenge of the whole thing was the physical. So I had at the beginning I had five cushions on either side of my knees. Um, to to prop them up so that I could sit, and I've also got a back injury with um, disc injury, so I had nerve pain shooting down the leg. I was in agony. Basically, I've had a shoulder reconstruction. Everything was aching, um, which I don't know if anyone else finds this when I'm doing um, personal development or anything. I tend to get all the aches come up. And the reason I share this is I'm really just wanting to emphasize this link. By the end of the 10 days, I all the cushions were gone. Um, I had no pain in the body. I, the whole 10 days of a passive meditation, you're focusing almost like on a body scan and the sensitivity to every sort of movement in the body to become aware of each part of the body released a lot of that tension. Um, and for me, it was probably the most um, powerful example of because I had the five cushions on either side and I had a back support, by the end I sat without anything with no pain um, and that was just from meditating. Um, so to me, it just really I just want to share. It's a little insight. Other people, does anyone else have anything similar from doing meditation? Um, it was probably the most powerful experience I've ever had to demonstrate really that link between physical and mental um, and how much my aches were linked to mental stresses and things I'd suppressed. Um, so that's Vipassana. In terms of sensory meditation, so that's meditations where you are focusing on a candle or you're focusing and it's all may, you may have done like raisin meditation we're focusing on eating so mindful eating is also a sensory meditation and again it's just getting that focus away from our thought process and focusing on one thing and it may just be focusing on the flavor of the food we're eating uh, it might be focusing on the candle flicker and the changes in the flame but it's again narrowing that focus down to just that one thing chanting um is i guess it's a mantra, typically, um, repeated um, and using voice as well. So I'm a sound healer um, and uh, I guess the principle behind sound healing and chanting and all of those things is really around bringing the body, you know, vibration. We all came from sound. We all came from light. A healthy body has a certain frequency. I'm using my hand like this because, it, you know, it, it vibrates at a certain level, sound can help to shift that frequency towards a healthier vibration. If we've got disease, then we will find if the whole body's in healthy vibration like that, then there'll be part doing that out of sync. And so sound and chanting and these types of sound approaches can help with bringing that physical body into alignment. And, and this is where I think meditation, the physical and the mental correlation is, is so powerful. We think we're doing mental and we are but then the physical adjusts with that positive suggestion um this is great when i find when i want to focus on something so even just doing happiness doing a gratitude um, meditation things like that just helping us to shift our mindset again if we're maybe in a loop to just start thinking about you know a happy time and, and think about something good and being able to again that's about that neural pathway and giving suggestions to the mind and to the brain of positive things, the more often we do it, the more often that more likely that'll become our default. And then guided visualization. That's always great when um, and this is where I like VI, VR, because you can go to another place, um, feel like you're there. And if you have any doubt, you can open your eyes in the VR and you'll be there. <laughs> so you don't have to pretend you're at the beach because you just open your eyes and in the virtual seat setting you think you're there and we can trick the mind. And we know the subconscious mind can't differentiate between what's real and what's pretend so if we imagine it's there our brain thinks it is there which is which is the great thing in the same way that if we're thinking of a happy place and that's positive suggestion even just smiling the brain chemistry research has shown shifts towards positive emotions positive thoughts and releases endorphins and all those positive good brain chemicals so 
again, it's that sort of fake it till you make it with meditation can be. If you're not feeling great, go with it. Um, allow it and just know that things will happen. And and sometimes, you know, sometimes the emotions won't all be positive and we'll go into that, you know, through today. Excuse me, Eddie, we're really yes. lucky that in our um, group today we've had someone who's done the Vipassana course a couple oh. of times oh. and I asked Rowena if she's happy to jump on and have a chat about it and she said she is. So yes. Rowena or Aaron, sorry, I'm assuming it's Rowena, but it might be Aaron. If you're happy to jump in and talk about it, that would be amazing. Great. Thank you. mics off um yeah sure I, I did it well, probably about 20 odd years ago I did the course um it's funny because my parents and my family were like you can't not talk for 10 minutes let alone 10 days you won't last and being very stubborn I was like I'll show you um and so I did the 10 core 10 days and I think life changing is definitely part of the course like I came out um, I didn't drink or eat meat for six months because it's all obviously vegetarian based. Um, mm. But I went back and I served the course after for another 10 days. So people were like, why? And then I've done a few day, like once you've done the 10 days, as you would know, Eddie, that you can go back and do the three days or one day retreat. So I've done a few of those. It has been a number of years. Um, but, you know, I guess the ripple effect from it, my dad did it many years later. So he was always like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it one day. And he went and did it. And he was an alcoholic for many years. And he came back and just went, you know, and quit drinking after that for, for a number of years. I will say he could, did get kind of back into it. But, yeah, he kind of quit drinking um, as well. But I have I have also had a friend um, <clears throat> that had a, a, a bad experience, I guess. Um, and it's not really talked about in the course and with med you know, with meditation, with that it can have some contraindications and it was a trigger. Mm -hmm. Um, he experienced a psychosis, um, which I know is quite common with some and I was actually gonna ask about the virtual realities, whether or not you've got contraindications for people that experience that, not to be doing things like that for because you can't decipher reality um and what have you. But I know there wasn't a lot of um there was no support for mm -hmm. him and through Vipassana, it was pretty much on you go, we can't help you, uh, you know, and sent them home um, and had a terrible experience through hospitals and and what have you since then for not kind of getting the right guidance. And all their family was like something about the course made them crazy and it was just like, well, now, it, you know, doing similar work now, I understand it more that it was just a trigger and just didn't have the right support around it at the time but um when I did it I loved it and yeah definitely went back now with three children I kind of always go you know years to come I'll go back and I'll do another 10 day I'm sure amazing thanks for sharing Rowena I think um yeah certainly support piece interesting you say that I was going to do it for about 10 years before I did it um because some of my friends who were psychs I'd had a major relationship breakup and they said don't go and sit there and do that to yourself at the moment. I wasn't um, emotionally stable enough. Uh, and I think that's, you know, the great thing about the VR in being in the centres is you've got support there. Um, and, and Kath, you can probably share about more of the support that's around with the meditation that we're offering. And that's one of the, you know, great things about, about this is that you will have support. Thanks so much for sharing, Rowena. It's really powerful to hear how much that shifted, not just for you, but also some of your family. And I think, you know, for those that are ready, it's a it's an amazing experience, and um, yeah, it's really powerful to hear your experience as well. Thank you. And if I may, I think it's also really important to have that open conversation around some techniques will work for some of us, not all techniques will work for us. You know, we're so different in what connects with us, and particularly what's going on in our world at the time. So. Um, yeah, I think it's really important that we look at emotional regulation is so important to learn and to try, but also to start to consider what support we might need around us in place as we're going through that. So I think it's such important conversations. Thank you. Thanks, Kai. So let's see how many other people have done meditation who are on the on this, this call now. This is a um, QR code or you can text. Um, otherwise, you'd, you'd have to text that to that number. So I think the QR code is a much easier option. Um, and I would just bring the screen up. So as you answer, that should – just let me know if it's – it should be activated. I've turned it on as far as I know. Oh, I'll bring it. Can you get that QR still on the top there, Kat? 
Thank you for asking the older person in the group. Yes, yes, I can. No, I could just see you. you're the only person I can see. That's why. <laughs> you're right. Sorry. I, I can. I have Thank very you. limited view at the moment. <laughs> I've got 0%. Is anyone voting? You have voted? I just oh, maybe sent that... one through, Eddie. Okay, so it might be that I need to put, I might have to close it off. That might be the, it might be me. Imagine that. No, it'd never be me. Yeah. Oh, there go. we go. There we go. I just have to do that. 80%. Yes. Okay, good. I've got my tick. 83% have. So 17% haven't. Great, 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 great. That's good. It's a nice little mix. So of those who have, um, I guess, how's your experience of meditation so far? I'm interested that you're on the call. Um, and, and I guess what I'm trying to establish here is why you're on the call. Is Has your experience been positive and you just want to get back into it? Has your experience been negative? Um, and I think it's also Good to be honest and real about it because I know when I first started, um, you can go and vote for the next one. I just make sure that I've opened it. Um, to be honest about where it can be, initially when I learned meditation, I hated it. So, yeah, no, I need to activate that one. There we go. That should be open for you to now vote on that other one in terms of how your experience has been. Okay to do, okay, here we go. Might be easier to do it on here. There's a response, people to vote. I find it, okay, I'm just trying to work out the C as far as I know was find it difficult. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Sorry, because I can't. I did write it. <laughs> no, you're right. okay. okay. So that's interesting. Um, some find it good. Some some find it reasonably easy. 57% though find it a little more challenging. So let's see if we can, I guess, I don't know that we can solve that today, but I think what we can do is give some context around why that might be. Because I'm one of those people. I think for about 10 years, I didn't, uh, I really struggled. Um, and I hated it, but I tried to make myself do it because I thought I should, which is never, <laughs> never a good way. Um, but I think it's it's also around persevering, you know, with things and finding the meditation that works for you. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more through today. Thank you for sharing. It's great. Does anyone want to share anything about their experience, given I just opened that up and then I haven't given you that opportunity? Does anyone want to experience, um, you know, what they find difficult, I guess, or what they enjoy, whatever where, whatever your experience is, I guess it would be nice to share, to hear from the group rather than me talking all the time about myself. Laura, I can just see Laura. If that's... Um, so I recently had um, weight loss surgery. And so for my dietitian, she's recommended the sensory meditation. So while I'm eating, because I can only eat like, a tiny portion of what I used to be able to eat. Um, so she recommends doing, because we have to chew so many times and everything before you swallow. So really taking that mental note and absorbing and just connecting with that moment while you're eating um, so that you don't feel like you're missing out on everything else. But it really does work to just focus and, and keep your mind on that. So it's been really positive. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. That's great to hear. I love that your dietitian's recommending that. I've never heard that before. Um, yeah, it's and that's such brilliant. a holistic approach. Sorry. Yeah. Eddie. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Um, if, maybe for the next one, sorry, Eddie, to put you on the spot, but you mentioned the raisin eating before, and that's a really good example to help people learn how to mindfully eat. So maybe for the next one, um, we might put it out there that if you've got a sultana in your house, that for our next workshop, if you're happy, Eddie, to run us through that, because it is really, it helps ground you in mindfulness eating, and it's a really simple one. I don't think I'll be able to send packets of sultanas to you all, I'm sorry. Um, but no, I but we could do it at the expo as well, Kath. 
Of, of course, we'll be doing raisin eating at the expo. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I actually, it's funny, Sally, because I do think, oh, I should have told Kath we could have got them all to have some raisins. <laughs> and I do, I There's um, a sheet that I was given on how to do it. So I'll send that out to everyone with the recording um, and everything else from today. And just to read through it even helps. And, and Laura, I don't know if you had to like really practice or anything, but it is once you're in the zone, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And it really fits. Yeah. Um, Brax, you wanted to say something? I was just going to add to the experience of for the meditation, but um, if we've got yeah. enough time, it's, it's yeah. Um, just a, a quick one. My background was I spent 22 years in in infantry and got out uh, in 2019 in time for COVID. And as I joked, the great toilet paper shortage we all went through. Um, I found the over the last couple of years, uh, my previous job, um, I was getting internally angry all the time you know little things you know people rocking up a minute late to my presentations you know we're in the military you're 10 minutes early or you're late um and i found that internally i was just getting i was like a volcano it never erupted but you know it started messing with my head and i um, went out and you know spoke to some professionals and one of the uh treatments um that they prescribed was yoga and meditation and you know being the typical alpha bloke at that time, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. That's not for me. And, you know, for a couple of months, they kept saying, and when I went back, have you done it? Have you done it? And I'm like, oh. so I finally gave in um, and kind of wish I did it 22 years ago. Um, I found just the peace that it gave me being able to sit down and concentrate on my breathing. And, you know, I found that the stress levels and the anger levels inside would rapidly deteriorate you know and and for me that's you know to say that i was rather impressed um the only issue i found is that you know i've got two great big dogs at home so whenever i sit down or lie down they they think it's playtime so i had to find a, a spot where they couldn't reach me but i was surprised um with how quick uh i found it worked and just finding that that inner peace the, the ability to just be away from everything and breathe and concentrate on your on your body. Um, yeah, look, it, uh, as I said, I wish I found it 20 odd, odd years ago. So that was my story. Thank you, Mark. No, that's amazing. And that's a, um, we, we'll go into a little bit of what you shared. So thank you, because that's really relevant to all of the content that we, we're going to discuss. So that's a beautiful example of, um, of, of what, it, of the benefit, the benefit that can have and what to expect. Does, does anyone else want to share? Yeah. Just, um, Eddie, only that I find that particularly with trauma responses, that when we start to do things like meditation and, and as you really um, beautifully state, if you're comfortable to close your eyes, if you're, in, you know, in that safe environment, and, and Rowena was talking about that before as well, it's really important to feel really safe in your space um, when you're taking on anything to do with calming because you don't want to be hypervigilant um, at the same time. So um, Mark mentioned his dogs, and, I mean, I know that mine like to come um, and investigate if I'm having some, you know, just sitting, not doing anything. So that can be a bit of a, um, a trigger as well. Not a trigger, sorry, but it can be a bit, um, yeah, a bit of an impact so there's the space is really important for all of us to make it safe yeah yeah no great thank you so in terms of when we meditate so we'll go into i'm going to go into a little bit the experience of meditation what to expect or um i guess prior to that let's think about our normal minds um when we're stressed um life is stress i put there um then we we tend to think about how to avoid it so it it, it can be this really vicious cycle which isn't productive um stress thinking about the stress and the fact that we want to not stress um creates more stress and and of course we're in if we're if we're in and i'm talking about um i guess i'm talking about the negative thoughts because to me this is the real benefit for me um and as mark said you know when you're having negative whether an anger sadness depression what it, whatever it is um, and we can also have happy thoughts, but, you know, we all flow with those easily. So there's no problem there. But it's like when we've got these negative thoughts, um, we have that stress, then we think about it, it creates more stress. So it, it becomes this loop, normal mind loop, I, I kind of call it. Um, and it can tend to prolong the stress when we when we get into those loops. And what meditation can do is shift the cycle because the body will go into that relaxation mode and break the cycle for that for that moment. 
um, as I mentioned before, and you know, if we're in a, if we're ruminating, that two minute shift in focus can be enough to break that rumination loop. Um, and so, it's getting aware of that benefit, I guess, and also being aware that the the emotions that come up might be positive and they may be ne negative. So, getting comfortable with all and allowing all. You'll notice in a lot of meditations, it has an element of sensing. So, um, sensing whether it be the raisin meditation that we mentioned or whether it be around body awareness you'll often be told to bring your awareness to your body bring your awareness to your breath and the reason for that is that well, one of the reasons for that is that it will bring that brainwave state down it's it's that starting to shift us down out of those sort of high high brainwave states um from beta and it brings it down into alpha um and starts to bring us towards that Theta state. So if that's all we get to, that's okay. It's just taking us out of that really heightened state and back down slightly um, and, and gives us something physical to focus on. Often, particularly, you know, particularly doers are very good at the physical and doing. So at least it gives us a focus that brings us into that physical, which can be easier than saying, I'd like you to go and drift off into this wonderland. And again, Horse, different horses for courses, but there's typically always an element of sensing in all meditations, whether it's looking, whether it's listening, whether it's touching, whether it's smelling, whether it's tasting, whichever it is. And there's elements of all of those in the VR. So you will be able to, there's a candle focus meditation where there's a candle flicker flame, which is created in virtual. Um, there's well, there's not the raisin one. I guess there's not that. But there's also uh, at the beginning of them, obvious, often they're sensed by the VR headset, like as in different oils for you to smell. And there's that sensory awareness of being aware, looking around in that environment um, and bringing that element in. So if you wonder why that's often in there, it's part of that taking us down into that space of relaxation. What you resist persists. This is one of my favourite lines that I learned on that personal development course because when you meditate and when you're stressed, typically you're like, no, I don't want to have that thought. No, I don't want to have it. No, 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 don't think about that. No, I'm not supposed to be thinking about that. I'm supposed to be thinking about this. And <laughs> the more we do that, what you resist persists. It's like if I say to you, whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant with rings. But what do you see in your mind? Pink elephant with wings, right? It's just, it's so it, there's an element of just, recognizing that and going okay and this is where this having compassion and allowing and this mindfulness piece comes into every meditation because thoughts are going to come up and of course the happy ones are always happy to embrace but when those negative ones come in it's it's around that observer piece of I often think of it like the um aerial view where we become we're not our emotions we're not our thoughts and recognizing that and just noticing and going okay that's really interesting and becoming curious about the thoughts versus, oh my God, I don't want to think that I'm supposed to be, this is supposed to be my chill out zone. I'm supposed to be in a bliss state and that's not what I'm having. And so it's all wrong. And this is, I can't do this. Um, and interestingly with the heart rate band, so you'll have a heart rate band with that one if you go into the centers and otherwise you can always take your heart rate before you do the meditation again after. One of the insights I wanted to share is um, when I did some of the meditations back then. I've also done some with brainwaves. Sometimes you think you've had the worst meditation experience of all and you have this busy monkey mind and it keeps going and going and going and you think, oh, I just didn't meditate at all. I just All I did was churn through thoughts and that was just a waste of time and I didn't really meditate. You'll be surprised and the reason I was so adamant with that one that we had that heart rate measure, you'll be surprised that often the heart rate will drop down and you'll get all of the physiological benefits but you just may not feel like you're in the bliss state and that's okay um, because all that means is that those negative emotions or those thought processes that you may not enjoy were there and they needed to be they needed to be seen they needed to be allowed to come through um, and it's that you know what you resist persists exists for thoughts exists for emotions and so the more we you know try and resist them or push them down the more th the more they're going to hang around so I just wanted to flag that because I was very good at this kind of trying to push everything aside. Very good. Um, and I know that um, as Daniel Wagner's um, research discovered that trying not to think about something, um, it's known as that ironic rebound. Um, his suggestion was that to give it up. Um, and his studies confirmed that if you give yourself permission to think about a thought, 
it becomes less of a focus and it becomes less likely to be in conscious awareness and the research showed that. So I guess just allowing and, and trying to stop your mind from thinking is not, you know, the mind's made to think, allow it, just allow it to be. Um, and some days we'll find we've got a heap of thoughts and other days we won't. And there's no, not necessarily a rhyme or reason, there might be, um, but it's it's that real thing of just accepting what is um, and remembering that it's the meaning we put to a thought that gives it power. Um, and so, you know, realising that and just kind of trying to detach, I guess, to an extent. Some days we'll be able to do it, some days we won't, and that's why we will have support when we need it. Um, the monkey mind, uh, and again, I'm really good at the monkey mind. And so I think I sort of I've mentioned already the rumination and the ability to break that. Um, one of the things that I think people try and get away from is that monkey mind, and we all have it. So I think it's it's again, I just wanted to flag this again and again because typically if we haven't done meditation before, there may be a lot of thoughts that'll come up. And it's getting comfortable with allowing them and going, oh, isn't this interesting? Wow, I've got all these thoughts that are coming up. Isn't it great that I've allowed the opportunity for them to come through? Um, or all these, and and with thoughts, I guess I go to the next one, there's always emotions. You know, so with each thought, we we always have emotions linked to a thought. Um, I call this the emotional funnel. So theoretically, um, emotions come in you know, come through our body, we're human, they're calm, they change, they're good, they're bad, and they flow through like a funnel. They through, flow through the system, we feel them, they move on. When we suppress them, they don't. Um, and it's like, I don't know if you've ever had that situation where I certainly have, I'm, I'm actually really good at um, the vent in the car park where someone steals my car park, the last car park, then I go and I find myself, it, it's like, oh my God, where did that come from? <laughs> it's like, um, it's not necessarily about the car park, is it? Uh, it's all of those um, negative, angry emotions that I've suppressed and pushed down. You know, at the end of the day, in our day-to-day -day life, there's certain situations, certainly in a work environment, that it's not appropriate to express anger. So we have to sometimes suppress it. Other times we just do because we're not comfortable with it. Whatever the reason doesn't matter. But the more we suppress them, the more they're stored in our body, the more that builds up. And my point of that is the funnel then gets blocked. And it stacks up. And then it's funny because I loved Mark's analogy because I have your analogy here, Mark. Then it the funnel flips over into a volcano <laughs> and you have the eruption of the emotion. Uh, so what meditation does, and Mark's already um, alluded to it and said, well, actually mentioned it, which is that it helps us to bring those emotions and allow them to be processed and to feel them and give that space. For the emotions to come through and again sometimes we need support there because of that and so I guess I wanted certainly to bring this up um, so that those who haven't meditated are aware um, and ready that you may need support and and we've got you've got all the support in the centers you've also got all the um, uh, what are the different numbers you've got lifeline and you've got what are the there's the one that's no name one yeah, we've sorry. got open arms and <laughs> also um safe zone which safe is zone. Anonymous, that where was we what can i was trying to remember uh, yeah, as a veteran yeah. or a veteran family member and not have to identify who we are which is open arms but it's anonymous so that's okay. been a really good impact uh, outcome in our service in the last couple of years having um safe zone available yes thank you that was the one i was trying to remember apologies <laughs> um so yeah so safe zone if, if you need it but uh, but at the end of the day the more we can just accept that the emotions are there and allow them to be filled and felt, sorry, and field, it's good English, um, the better. And so that we don't have those volcanoes through the day and have to apologise later for some outbursts that we've had. The other thing that I think I love about emotions is to me they're, emotion, they're a flag um, and they're a flag for something that may be out of alignment or, or they're a flag for something that, that I need more support with. Um, and or they're a flag that things are great so it's not always bad but I but I like to think of emotions as a really great opportunity and a gift of a flag for me to go oh okay I need to look at this um, and whether I look at it then and there in the meditation or whether I say I need to go and get support I need to go and see, speak to my psych um, then whichever it is it's it's a gift in that respect um, and particularly for me I find it useful yeah with okay is this out of alignment with my values why am I feeling like this and without that, it's very easy to go off track. So I do I do see um, emotions now as very much that. It's kind of helping to keep me on my path and allow me to have support when I need it. And it's a gift to say, you know, something's not not right for me today um, and what do I need? 
Um, and it's really, I think, that gift in meditation is it giving us that chance to stop um, and that chance for that point of choice of I'm going to choose this action versus a reaction that I then have to apologise for later. Um, and that's, I think, the real gift that that meditation and mindfulness has certainly given to me. Does anyone else want to sh share any of their other um, experiences? Sorry, don't have to. I just, I'm conscious that please feel free to put up your hands and share any experiences because I'm conscious that was it 57% or 58% of people have, you know, meditated and enjoy it. And so I think we've got about 70% of the group that's, that meditate. So, um, yeah, I'm all up for, for sharing. All right. During the meditation, um, I guess there's this, this kind of whole thing about managing thoughts. Um, so one, it's allowing them. Um, but two, it's like, okay, if they're becoming too much, what are the options that, that we have and what are some tools that we can do around that? So, you know, the top one I think is really realising when we need to reach out for help. Um, but there's also this refocus, which I mentioned, helps get us, get us out of the rumination. Um, naming the thought, naming the emotion, um, I guess it identifies it one and then we can make a choice around it. But it also reminds us that we are not the thought, we are not the emotion. Um, for me, that naming the emotion and last week was a great um, introduction um, with veteran psychology on naming the emotion. And I think that theme comes throughout this, throughout meditation. Um, and it, it it expands our emotional intelligence as well and our awareness of how we are feeling, giving us options to then deal with that. Um, so through the different meditations we have, all of these approaches exist, you know, whether it's looking forward and back through thoughts, moving from one to another, noticing what is um, increasing positive thoughts and that and that becomes more around, okay, I'm going to choose to do the happiness and the gratitude one meditations more so than the mindfulness, depending on where you're at. And that's why I love the fact that you can do a whole lot of meditation. There's not one way. Focus, lose focus. So I mentioned this again because this is about the experience of meditation. Um, three equally important steps in meditation is that you're going to focus, then you're going to lose focus, and then you're going to focus again. Um, and it's really, again, having compassion with ourselves is a big important part of meditation so that you don't walk away feeling frustrated um, and I guess not having expectation. Um, I think I was always very judgmental of myself that I wasn't doing it properly and I also expected a bliss state um you know you see all these pictures of yogis in in a bliss state you know at the end of the day they're meditating 10 hours a day we're not um and that's not a what's not a lot of our anyway I certainly not my life purpose that's not my life purpose we're not raising the consciousness of the planet we're using this as a fantastic tool to help us manage our busy lives because we're contributing in different ways right so that bliss state is a gift when it comes is all I can say <laughs> because um it's not it's not the norm and it's actually you know it's not the norm it, it might be but it comes and goes like any emotion it comes and goes and so the focus lose focus is also a part of meditation some days you'll have more loose focus than focus other days you'll have more focus and um yeah I really want to if you take nothing out of nothing more out of today than than this I think I want you to be or us to be and I remind myself of this um aware of the fact that just because you have a busy mind in meditation doesn't mean the benefits are any less um and it's kind of really about acknowledging the time out that we're taking not that every meditation experience has to be bliss um even if it's just that focus on breathing and sometimes with the VR people say to me oh look I don't really like meditation but I just like going and sitting at the beach and focusing on my breath and I turn the voice over off great it's fine you know what it is whatever works for you um okay so this slide was kind of Kath, um, alluded to it. And again, it's just to say, you know, when we're doing guided visualizations, any sort of meditation that any emotions may come up in today, when we're, I'm going to do, we'll do another visualization shortly. Don't feel that you have to take part. If you don't want to do so, please don't. Um, it's very much a voluntary thing. Uh, and that, that goes with everything that we do in any of these workshops. So um, 
I thought what we might do today is uh, do uh, one of the one of the examples that we have in the headset, which is Man on the Moon. I really like this one. It's not it's not a long one, but it's one I use all the time um, through my day because it's one you can do really quickly, um, or you can do it longer. But it's really about getting perspective of a situation that I've got in my day. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed, um, it might have been good for me to do just before when my water when I realised I had no water before the session. <laughs> Get some perspective. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to do next for those who would like to to join in, to start to get comfortable. I'll change the screen to, to that nice beach scene um, and we'll play a little bit of music. Uh, are there any questions before I do that? Okay. I think you're all good to go, Eddie. Okay, I just thought we'd do a different one because uh, the other ones we've done have been more mindfully both based. And this is, I guess, more about changing the focus and giving a different perspective through the meditation. And I guess that is, for me, I like being able to have a different intention for the meditations that we do. So there's a little beach, beach scene if you want to focus on that. So just take a moment to get comfortable. You might be sitting or you might be lying down. And just become aware of the environment that's surrounding you. As you connect with your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Feeling the sensations of the breath as it flows in and out of the nostrils. Relaxing more and more with each breath. Now bring your awareness to a situation or an event that's troubling you. It might be something that happened way back or it might be something that's going to happen in the future. Or it may have just happened. As you get a sense of that event in your mind. And be there in first person as you look out through your eyes at what's happening. Notice who's there, what's happening. Notice how you're feeling. And you might want to label the emotions you're feeling. And observe any thoughts that come up to the surface. Once you're there in that event, I want you to see yourself now float up just above it. And get a sense as you look down on what's happening. And now continue to float up further and further, higher and higher. Up above the trees and buildings, floating up into the sky, above the clouds, drifting higher and higher. Continue to look down on the event with everyone and everything there. As you float up higher now, up above the clouds, way up into the stars, floating up onto the moon. And as you look back down on that event now,
Notice where it sits now. As you see it, a little black dot there on planet Earth. A little tiny dot. Notice how much smaller it seems in the whole context of the whole planet, universe. And as you sit looking at it from this perspective, gain any insights about the event. Any learnings or new perspectives from this vantage point. And when you've done that, allow yourself to drift back down through the stars, sky, above the buildings, back down into the present moment. And take a moment to consider any new perspectives and thoughts. as you bring your awareness back to your surroundings. Hear the sounds. Notice the scenery. As you take a couple of deep breaths, and center back into the here. And now, okay. So does anyone want to, how did you go with that? I did, um, I did mean to flag not to take too big an event, so apologies, I hope that wasn't a problem. Um, it's typically great for small events. So did anyone, does anyone want to share? Has anyone done anything like that before in terms of inner meditation practice or a, no, no? I think you've just all relaxed us too much, Eddie. But Rowena's going to jump yeah, in. Say, oh, say, thanks, say, Rowena. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was silent. Um, I was going to say I really enjoyed that I didn't find that one as stimulating with no sound and just your gentle voice guiding us was really good. Um, I've done a little bit of hypno before, but I did probably pick to a big event and I realised it was past. But I kind of got a bit stuck there. And then as we do, my mind floated to kind of an, uh, a forward event that hasn't happened. And I was like, okay, that's interesting that I went there. So I kind of went with that a little bit more. And then, you know, and it's around my children and stuff. And then I was like, you know what, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, when we kind of put it in that different perspective of like, this is just part of growing and learning. And yeah, it made me have that different perspective of like looking at it going, focus on the positive things, not on like what hasn't even happened yet as well. So yeah, I just thought I'd share a little bit. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I love that, um, as you say, it wasn't what you expected um, and you just went with it because I think that's the, um, and that's that point of choice, right? It's that kind of awareness of, oh, no, 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 it's all right. Don't judge it. Oh, this is fine. Just go with it. Isn't that interesting that that other event might, oh, I wonder if it's linked. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, interesting. Changed. Oh, it's changed again. Um, so, no, thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else want to share? No? Okay. Um, well, as I said, it, that was a more sort of structured, you know, going into a sort of an NLP process almost. Um, but that's what I like in terms of that opportunity of when we're in that meditative state and what we can, the insights we can have and the shifts that we can have. Um, and sometimes it won't go the way we think. But again, just remember that that shift in focus is enough. So um, at one is, you know, is about 
helping people to perform um, their best every day. So allowing those tools to help people do different types of meditation, shift the mindset and be able to refocus on your day is is kind of what it what it's about. Has anyone been into the centers yet, Kath? Have you have we got the bookings open? Uh, no, hopefully that will all be organized by the um the next couple of days. So I can send that out with the recording and everything else. Okay, fantastic. Um so yeah the the actual Sessions that we've got are under different categories for those who were here last week. Apologies because you'll hear a little bit again, but I just wanted to, to again, just make people aware of the there's seven categories that go range from that mindfulness-based approach of kind of being aware of our bodies and our breath um, into more and to the, and that example I just did of of man and the moon is is kind of more around shifting mindset or there's difficult conversations going to first second third person there's um, healthy eating there's um, motivation to exercise um, there's quit smoking there's different types so from lifestyle resilience um, empathy there's gratitude and then there's just focusing on breath and, and noticing the environment and sensory um, candle focus so I encourage you to you know to try different things or see what appeals with you the menus themselves start on the left from more mindfulness and then to the right they become more focused on on different intentions and, and areas of focus um, this is what the headsets in the middle are, are what you have in the centers um, and as we mentioned last week, if anyone doesn't have access to a centre and you would like to try it, please let us know. Um, we'll see if we can make it happen. Um, we will have the odd roaming headset, so that, that will be an option. If we can make it happen, we will. And that's just a bit of an insight into the different menus that exist um, and that final screen that will give you the chart on the left of your heart rate changes. And so, again, I think there's a great um, awareness in an education piece in noticing, particularly on the days when you think you've not had a good meditation, do take the time to have a look at what your focus level was and what your heart rate was, because that in itself to me I, was a real education of, oh, wow, when I think I've not done well, I actually have had all the benefits that I that I needed um, and can be enough to kind of motivate us to keep going and it's worth it, it does do something. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to do that. But that's pretty well all that I was going to speak about today, really. I just wanted to give a bit of an insight into what to expect, expect why we meditate, um, and that I guess that thought and emotion loop and being being aware of what emotions come up and being ready to have support if you need it after. Um, are there any questions? If you're happy to stop sharing, Eddie, and I'll stop the recording. Yeah. Thank you very much, Eddie. I'll just get that in through the recording. Brilliant yeah. um, workshop. Thank you. Thanks.